Hi, I'm Ali, I'm one of the physios from sportsinjuryphysio.com. This is the fifth episode in our Greater Trochanteric Pain Syndrome series and what we're going to be talking about today is whether stretches are a good idea or really not a good idea. In our last two, when I've talked about um, tip, standing and sitting tips and also lying and sleeping tips, we've talked about how if the body gets into a position where we're compressing that tendon more against the bone, so i.e. the tendon's getting nearer to that bone, either, for example, lying on it or your leg coming into that adductive position or in sitting and stand, sorry, in standing when you're more leaning onto one side, you might feel like you're putting more um, compression through that tendon. So what I mean by that is where your bottom muscles come around and attach onto the greater trochanter, the bony bit on the side, where they attach when we do those positions, we're bringing that tendon closer to that bone, creating a compression force. If that tendon or the bursa that sits underneath it is irritated, it's then going to be acting like it's being pressed on, like a bruise would be pressed on and it can create more pain. Now this is exactly what's happening when we're stretching. If we go back in time and we look at when we were talking about this being not great at trochanteric pain syndrome and knowing less about it and called it hip bursitis, one of our common exercise treatments we would give people is stretching and we would try and stretch your tensor fascia lata, we try and stretch your ITB and we try and stretch your glute muscles. So your glute muscles are your bottom muscles your tensor fascia lata or TFL for this, this top part and the ITB runs all the way down here. Now what we do know is when your leg drops into that stretching position this IT band, so ilio, that's this part here, tibial, that's that part there, so these two bones, the ilium and the tibia, are where the band runs through. This band goes over the top of those gluteal tendons and can compress it and push into it so it goes even closer to that bone. So that's why the theory was, well, let's stretch this out and get this longer and see whether this can help. But in fact, all of those stretches we're doing, we're putting it in the position where it compressed and therefore it was more likely to aggravate. So what I'm trying to get at is please avoid glute stretches and TFL and ITB stretches whilst you are in a rehab process. Now compression is a completely normal force that I would expect your body to be able to withstand and therefore these sorts of movements are something that we may come back to later in rehab and get you used to doing again but if for the first port call means that we're releasing that pressure that's being put on that area so you're stopping pressing on that bruise then things will make it feel better. So typical glute stretches that you might well have seen would be the figure four stretch. It may have been bringing your knee in towards your shoulder. And you may also have seen the one, and I'm going to just move you up a bit so you can see me in standing, which is quite common in gyms where they call it the ITB stretch, where you put your legs behind and lean to the other side. In all of these, can you see how this takes that leg into this across the body position or it's trying to stretch this outside part here. Now, incidentally, there's also been a lot of findings in the studies to show that you can't actually stretch your ITV band because that IT band is non-contractile and therefore is very little point in holding those stretches in the first place. So if you are considering doing some exercises for your greater trochanteric pain syndrome or outside hip pain, we'll come on to what some useful, stretch, um, useful exercises, sorry, she'll be in another uh, video, but please avoid these stretches for the time being. Thanks very much. Bye.